set standards in the right education system. I'm the former Frank Key. Of the Northwest Pass, we really need somebody different. A career, you're used to winning a lot. It was everything to us. Seven or eight weeks of two days. They really made me appreciate we're allowed to win. And he's coming in and we'll be shooting the whole time. Let's go back real quick to the, the Enid Walker thing. And of course, we have turning into fine space. Legitimately, you know, a little more. I could say tip on that, Steve. Put my hat on and get out there and do the job. The television model that you watched growing up. Houston, this is the International Space Station. City Connections begins right now. Hello again. Welcome to City Connections. I'm Steve Kime with the City of Enid. Thank you for uh, being with us again today. Very special guests um, doing a statewide tour, I think a seven city tour. Enid, Oklahoma is one of our stops. Our special guest today, State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister. Joy, welcome Thank to you. Enid. Thank you so much. You've been here for several hours and yeah. uh, we appreciate your time today. Was I right on the seven city tour? That's right. Uh, seven cities across Oklahoma. Okay. Have you made it to all 77 counties? Ah, you know, probably, <laughs> probably close. Um, I, I'm not so sure I can keep up with sure. and compete with Lieutenant Governor. He, yeah. He's remarkable in that way. Right. And, and he deliberately makes that effort. But it's amazing how big the state can be. It sure there is. It is. Well, right off the bat, Engage Oklahoma, big event in Enid, Oklahoma today. Uh, what are what is taking place? What are people? There are moms and dads and different business yeah. leaders watching this interview today, mm -hmm. superintendent, and they want to know what is Engage Oklahoma all about. So, what is taking place here at the Enid High School? Well, we're getting ready for the new year. Everyone is gearing up over the summer months to, to the summer? prepare. Yeah, <laughs> the summer goes by so quickly, yeah. and while families are um, on vacation, kids are in camps, or um, folks are are attending even summer school. Uh, there are teachers all across the state, and principals and district leaders who come together for professional development to get ready. And there's a lot we have to do to gear up. Uh, many changes that uh, we are preparing for, and also I think uh, just the new changes in federal law as well as state law um, have much work to do for strong implementation. And so that's part of how we are here today, actually delivering 115 professional development breakout sessions with 52 of my colleagues from the State Department of Education who are here with unique fields of experience, and they are here to deliver that. Well, I want to ask you to, in a few moments what you're hearing from teachers and also parents. Yeah. But is there an overall theme as you travel from northwest to southeast and just really across the state? And I believe this is the third year for Engage Actually, Oklahoma? Actually, this is the second year. Second so year. it's okay. something that we, you're I right. I know you had visited it is cities the third, before. Okay. Yeah, it's actually the third year for Engage OK. Okay. But after some of the uh, struggles that we had financially, we wanted to make sure that districts were able to attend and weren't having to take any money away from the classroom to travel to Oklahoma City, where okay. traditionally the summer conference was held. So we had our first one in Oklahoma City. And then after last year, we decided we've got to go on the road. And we took everyone on the road and took it to the people and uh, met teachers and school leaders regionally all across the state. So we are in new locations sure. uh, this year and we're, we're able to see thousands of teachers as they prepare for the new year. In preparation for the interview today, um, I took a look at your website and there's a lot of information about Engage Oklahoma and I encourage you to take a look at that website to learn what this tour is all about and, and what's yeah. being achieved. Again, we'll talk about the teachers responses and parents' responses, but is there an overall theme that you're hearing from folks across the state? Well, I think what uh, I hear is that education is a number one, the number one priority in Oklahoma. People understand that if we are going to have a strong Oklahoma economy, if we're going to have a strong um, state where businesses want to come, where families uh, want to ensure that they put down roots and they stay here and that they have generations of future Oklahomans, it's going to be determined on a strong education system. So what I hear is that education matters. It's on the forefront of 
the minds of people that we talk to, whether they're business owners uh, or folks that are working in the faith-based community or nonprofit community or in schools doing the important work of educating kids. Well, education is important. I remember I grew up in Perry, Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and I think I was a sophomore in high school, and my mom said, Steve, now remember this, school is never out. And I was so depressed when she said that because, you know, I, I was waiting for, uh, you know, the, the senior year and college to be over with, get this behind me. But how true she was to say, as long as you're breathing, as long as you're participating yeah. in life, the education progress continues. So as you're traveling the state, Superintendent, let's focus on the teachers. What are they mm -hmm. saying to you? Well, teachers are, are certainly here because they care about kids. And right. what they are saying is that they need the resources to do the job they know how to do, the job they were professionally trained to do. And uh, yet, those resources are thinning. And we see with a teacher shortage, uh, class sizes are continuing to grow. And it makes it even more difficult to give that individual, personalized instruction that every student deserves. And so what I see from teachers is they want to ensure that they keep up with changes. We have new, more challenging academic standards in math and English language arts and science. And we have new assessments that are measuring that that were just given this last spring. And so they're eager to get those results and um, then really help chart a path for new growth for the kids they receive in the new fall school year and they're ready to hit the ground running. But it's, it's going to take resources to do that. So uh, from teachers, that's what I hear. Okay. I also hear that teachers uh, find that as they are in teaching, um, it's hard to stay in Oklahoma once they move from that newly graduated college student uh, to a um, new um, young family that is thinking about growing that family and having children. And this is where we see a, a departure out of the profession or out of the state, where they find they have to be able to pay to raise that family. So this is on, I think, the top of uh, their mind and uh, certainly on ours as we continue to deal with the teacher shortage. And that's a, a very difficult decision for that educator to make, that teacher to make. Uh, yeah. Do I stay here and do this, or do I go there and do that? Yeah. So it's really challenging. Well, let's talk about the other, the audience, if you will, and that's the parents. Are there any priorities that they're, they're bringing to you, or any concerns that the the parents are bringing to you? you? Said you're the state superintendent, fix this. Yeah. So what are their priorities? Yeah. Well, I think what they want is to know that their child is going to get a well-rounded education, that they are going to be ready to compete or ready for their next steps in learning, whether that's a career certification or moving on to college or university, and that their students aren't going to need remediation when they head off to college. Uh, this is a problem in Oklahoma, and it's a problem that costs Oklahoma families $22 million a year to pay for the college tuition that doesn't earn college credit but it is remedial coursework that their students could have been doing in the school years of K through 12. And so we are putting a new focus on being truly ready. And part of how we know we're ready is that we have standards that align with college or career certification, high skill, high industry demand certification, and uh, now having a new measurement tool to make certain we're ready, um, we feel we are on the right track. So one of those changes that families like to know, I think, is that we will be giving the ACT or SAT for all high school students instead of the way we've done it in the past, which were tests that did not seem to actually move the needle in preparing kids for school and their next steps after graduation. I have a question for you. That I hope not to put you on the spot, but sure. we're talking about education, and I'm thinking about days back in Perry, Oklahoma, and Superintendent, my favorite teacher was a fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Frederick. She's no longer mm. with us. But uh, when I think of educators, I think of the impact that she had on me way back, fourth grade. Did yeah. you have a favorite teacher? I did. So, or teachers? I, yeah, I, there's two that come to my yeah. mind. Um, my first one is um, second grade, Miss Keck. 
And Miss Keck always took time after lunch, and we would mm -hmm. have a recess, to come in and read a chapter of mm -hmm. a a particular book that we would go through. And Charlotte's Web was the first one that I have a memory of okay. with her. Um, I struggled with reading and I couldn't keep up with everybody else in second grade. And she opened the door for me to be able to enjoy the same books that yeah. others were. And then later, fast forward, if you will, um, to my 11th grade English teacher. And she was um, the, the teacher, Mrs. Applegate, who helped me have confidence in my writing ability. And she inspired me to major in English. And I wanted to be a teacher from the time I met Miss Keck, but it was Mrs. Applegate who gave me a love for literature and writing. And she challenged me to do things that I wasn't sure I could do. And her belief in those creative abilities um, are, are really what fueled my interest in persevering through um, some of the dissuasion that you have as you are considering majors and to go back to what I always wanted to do, which was teach, and I love teaching kids. Well, thank you for sharing that. My hope is someone who's watching this interview is gonna reflect back and go, hmm, she shared her favorite teachers, I'm thinking about mine, so. You know, sure, yeah. you bring up a great point. With the teacher shortage, one of the things that we have done as an initiative in the last year is to have a series of videos from notable Oklahomans to talk about the teacher who shaped their life. And we are so proud of some of the um, actually national stars who, who took time to take a video of themselves, um, remembering, just as you did, that fourth grade teacher or that coach who made a difference, who pushed them, who invested in them, who made them know they believed in that student and that that sparked a confidence and a hard life lesson perhaps about, um, about pushing beyond uh, what was easy in some cases uh, and how it just shaped their life. And teachers make a difference. I was talking to a teacher uh, over the lunch hour of Engage OK, and she's a first year teacher, hasn't ever taught, just signed the contract, just graduated. And I asked her, why are you teaching in Oklahoma when so many are choosing other states? And she said, I'm here and I'm going to teach because of the outcome, not the income. And wow. she wanted to give back to the community that gave her so much. That's so, powerful. That's and that powerful. gives me hope yeah. that we have these kinds of exactly. professionals exactly. who want to invest their lives yeah. in children. And the educators in my family, they were born to be educators, not to do anything yeah. else. And I always admired that about their spirit, their attitude, and their professionalism. They could do other things, but they were born to be educators. So yeah. it's good to have those folks on our team. Thank you for joining us today on City Connections. My very special guest from Oklahoma City, State Superintendent Joy. Hoffmeister, and we'll have more with the superintendent right after this. Thanks for staying with us. Welcome back to City Connections. Thank you for joining us today. My very special guest. Uh, traveled all the way from Oklahoma City and other communities, and she's a part of Engage Oklahoma, the state superintendent, Joy Hoffmeister. Joy, um, sometimes school security is on the mind of people when they see things on the national news that this took place on the East Coast or the West mm -hmm. Coast, stuff like that. Um, in your two and a half, almost three years as state superintendent, is security on, on the to-do list? Where, where does that reside? Because I think the people want to know about safe schools. Yeah. Well, security always has to be top of mind. Uh, parents send their children to school with the expectation that they sure. will be safe. Sure. Uh, this is something that has to be a local community, a local school district's top priority. Uh, we also need to ensure at the state level where we have power in this particular arena, uh, not, not to come in and say you need to have certain local measures, uh, a very one-size-fits-all um, approach. We, we think that that is best at the local level. However, what we can control is a zero tolerance for any kind of bad acting of teachers, of professionals. Um, we know that we have 
tremendously talented and dedicated professionals all across the state. And where we have um, a cause for concern, new laws have actually um, been uh, written and changed to protect students even more. And we have been able to assist in the um, passing of those because it is critical that our children have a safe place, one that is free from distraction, and one that is going to be fully devoted and focused on learning. And we'll continue to be strong advocates for that. It's, a, it's kind of a shame that it's even a topic because going yes. to school in my days, that was not even a, a concern about secu yeah. security, but it's good to know that it is on the minds of uh, the leadership that we have. Absolutely. In preparation, Superintendent, for our visit today, I was looking again at your website and I noticed that uh, in, just in your short tenure, you had, had implemented this or, or goal of an eight-year strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And I know you could probably spend a day talking about your yeah. st strategic plan, but can you just share with us, for someone who's not familiar with that plan, what is one key ingredient that you're focusing on? Right. Well, we do have an eight-year sure. <laughs> we have an eight-year strategic plan for education, and that uh, really has metrics then to measure how are we doing, how are we going to get there, um, how are we going to achieve these goals. And one initiative that is a key ingredient in moving the student performance even higher and being more competitive uh, begins with a plan. You know, a goal without a plan is just a wish. And so as we think yeah. about how do we assist kids to really reach their full potential, to be really ready for the jobs of the future, the careers of the future, it starts with a foundation in learning. We want to make sure that students have free opportunities to think about what they want to be, uh, where their passion and interest might lie, and, and that may be undiscovered. Um, students can't be what they don't see. You know, it was Marion Wright Edelman who, who first said those words, and I've repeated them many times. Uh, we want to help our kids have a, a plan so that they can really have many opportunities to um, pursue those goals, to be ready, and we think that parents need to be a part of that. Uh, we've got to start that earlier. One of the key ingredients for a successful eight-year plan is to have an individual career academic plan, or ICAP, for all kids. So we want to see 100% of students, sixth grade through 12th grade, with an individualized plan, one that is really tailored to their strengths and their aspirations and then ensure that those students have what they need so that when they're graduating and transitioning to college or career or certification path in career tech, that they have what they need to hit the ground running. And that is a new law that was passed that is going to be implemented over a three-year rollout and it starts this next year. Very good. Tell us again, ICAP stands yeah. for Individual? Individual Career Academic Plan, ICAP. And I think maybe we all need an ICAP. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, we're talking about strategies and strategic plans, if you will. Now, I know for 2017, Enid's on your list uh, of, of the Engage Oklahoma, the On the Road Tour, if you yeah. will. You had Tulsa, Weatherford, Cash, Durant, Ada, mm -hmm. uh, I missed somebody. Some, uh, UConn. 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 Yeah. Okay, the Millers, home of That's the Millers. That's right. Okay. So, what's your strategy? That's a diverse group from Cash all the way to Durant. Um, what's the strategy there? The strategy is to be able to reach as many people as possible in a two-week period. And uh, so by going to areas where schools have voluntarily opened up their, their high school, uh, and we need a facility large enough for hundreds and hundreds of people, and, and in some cases thousands who have come at one day for this uh, professional development support. Uh, and, and really regionally locate those so that uh, there's not too far of a drive so that everyone can sure, participate. Sure. So that, that's the strategy, and then also to spread it out. So we've tried not to repeat the same city twice this year, uh, with the exception of Durant. Durant um, made the most sense so that we could reach um, the most number of folks in southeastern Oklahoma. It's an amazing how big our state is. It is. We may not think it's a very big place, but you get in a car and start traveling. Absolutely. So. And everyone uh, has appreciated um, the 
uh, reaching out to them. And uh, we've heard from some who say that they've never attended uh, the Summer Professional Development Conference that was normally held in Oklahoma City. And that by coming to them, uh, they've been able to maybe drive 45 minutes to a regional site and make certain that they are able to participate. But I have to also tell you that we have done this with the cooperation and support of some sponsors. And had it not been for that, uh, support, uh, we, we certainly wouldn't have been able to do this um, for just minimal cost uh, for, for the agency budget. Uh, but by going out on the road, we've actually saved hundreds of thousands of dollars and uh, at a time when every dollar counts and every dollar uh, should be going uh, to the classroom and to support uh, our educators, uh, we are excited to have found a new way to do that. I have two questions to go, and number one okay. is, what's the favorite part about your role as state superintendent? My favorite part about being state superintendent is the people. Uh, and, and it is both the educators that I get to interact with and hear from who find me on Facebook or uh, who are a part of a Facebook working group um, mm -hmm. in a particular subject. Um, I love being able to kind of listen through that social media opportunity, but then the children and the students. I am so inspired by students. And in fact, today um, we had a, work, a breakout se session with students who were from Enid High School and um, surrounding area who came together and led a group called What Students Wish Their Teachers Knew. And they were on the you know stage if you will answering questions from teachers and the greatest message that they shared was that they learn the most when they know teachers care and they were able to articulate what that looks like and they explained how they are so appreciative of the time that teachers spend outside the classroom and that that does not go unnoticed by them. They know teachers have um, more and more responsibilities and more students that they are serving. And that extra time doesn't go unnoticed. And it actually makes them feel more motivated to engage. And uh, one young man said, I learn best when I know my teacher won't give up on me. And that was inspiring to me. So anytime I have those opportunities to just hear from students and um, witness that powerful passion that a teacher sure. just seems to have such a radiance um, about them as they are doing what they love. Uh, it, it fuels me to fight even harder to make sure they have what they need to stay in Oklahoma and to continue to invest in kids. Sure. Thank you for sharing that. Well, as we close our interview, you've been very gracious with your time today yeah. and appreciate uh, the opportunity to get to know you a little bit better and learn more about education. Uh, I'd like for you, or at least to give you this opportunity sure. to, to speak to the camera that's next to my shoulder. Sure. And um, yeah, you can talk to whoever, the parents or whoever you wish, but we'd just like to hear from the state yeah. superintendent and this is your opportunity to speak to the folks of Oklahoma. Yeah, all right, well, thank you. Well, as we work to really lift education outcomes, we have three pillars in mind. And the first is to achieve academic success for all kids, and then to build exceptional educators and schools, and then create engaged communities. We know we cannot do the first two without increasingly engaged communities. So uh, I'm calling on all of our families and our leaders in the community, um, our faith-based community, even those who have retired and want to give back um, and can invest even an hour a week. We need you in schools and our, uh, the stakes are very high our kids' future is counting on it. And so I am grateful and privileged to stand shoulder to shoulder with this community and with educators and leaders who have devoted themselves to uh, the future of kids and the youngest generation of Oklahomans. And it's a privilege to get to serve with them. So thank you. And it's a privilege to visit with you today. And uh, on behalf of uh, Mayor Bill Shuey and the city councilors here in Enid, Oklahoma, uh, oh. I get the privilege well, to present you. you this medallion. 
that we give to special guests and dignitaries. Well, thank you very and, much. and you fit that category today. Oh. And on the other side, you will see, of course, you know where Ena is located, but uh, we have a big star there on the state of Oklahoma to let people know that we're the boundless and original and vibrant community of Enid, Oklahoma. That wow. is uh, the city of Enid's way to say thank you for spending time with us here on the thank Enid you. Television Network. And uh, we wish you well. Oh, thank, thank you very much. I really appreciate you, you, Steve. Thanks. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on City Connections today. Uh, our very special guest, State Superintendent Joy Hoffmeister. Well, um, I don't know who's next, but it's going to be good because they're always tough act to follow, aren't they? But thank you for joining us. Again, I'm Steve Kine with the City of Enid. Until next time, make it a great day.